Hey everybody, I think we're we're live. Let's see. I'm gonna hop on YouTube and, and check it out on my end. See how professional this is. <laughs> how are we doing, everybody? Welcome to the first uh, installment of Ask the Experts over here. Uh, so right now we are sitting down with Bo Trefiro and Sean Burke. These are the, the whole point of this live stream and this whole series for me was essentially to make my friends talk about skateboarding because we already talk about freestyle skateboarding way too much uh, in our free time. And a lot of these conversations are things that would, I think, help immensely a lot of these people who are getting into freestyle. So whether you are brand new and you've never even touched a freestyle board or you've just kind of started dabbling in freestyle, probably have a lot of questions. You're probably trying to figure out kind of what's going on with all this stuff. And luckily, I have these friends who are like so knowledgeable and have so much experience in this world. So I wanted to bring everybody together, let you kind of get a inside look into what we chat about and hopefully learn a bit about freestyle skateboarding. So I'm going to let them actually introduce themselves. Um, Bo Trefier, I'll let you go first. Who are you? Um, I'm, I'm Bo Trefier and I run Open Source Skateboards, which is a skateboard building project and education project. So teach, teach skateboard building people and experiment with boards and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like we, we know each other for ages. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you're like <laughs> one of the most uh, kind of active educators, I think, in the whole skateboarding world and like freestyle skateboarding, especially right now. And I, I know I've, I've counted on you on many uh, levels for uh, helping us design a lot of stuff with waltz and what I ride. Uh, but yeah, and then speaking of, of relying on people to help me make cool stuff, almost cursed, uh, Sean Burke, the king hey, of freestyle. I, <laughs> I'd like to think so. Uh, I'm Sean Burke. I just do a bunch of truck things for some pogos, and that's about it. And I flood it, social media with it. And I, I think like you kind of downplay how much of a like master of like materials and and uh, <laughs> manufacturing you are. I mean, we don't have to go too far into that, but like you definitely got me out of hot water and like helped me navigate some crazy stuff in skateboarding. Yeah, I mean, I've been uh, I've been in textile manufacturing for probably about ten years now, and uh, I mean, I travel all over the U.S., so I understand the language. It may not be directly with uh, what Mike's dealing with, but I understand manufacturing. So if I can uh, share a little insight and, uh, you know, I'll do what I can do for you, Mike. You're the best, Sean. Well, yeah, so I'm hoping we can kind of chat through some ideas about freestyle. And we've, we've all talked in our own time about, like, what freestyle skateboards are and, like, how they differ and what we all skate. I think we all kind of skate really different stuff. But uh, today's episode is going to be all about board shapes and uh, freestyle skateboard decks specifically, right? Um, so let me pull something up real quick here. Do some screen sharing. Bear with us, people. This is our first episode. I'm new to this. So if you don't know, skateboard decks have sort of a couple of major uh, dimensions here. Now, this is probably something a lot of you out there are familiar with, whether it's the length, the the wheelbase. I've never heard pan, actually. I don't know where we got that from. <laughs> <laughs> Nose, tail, with... Bo, oh, do you know that one? Have you seen I've that always before? referred to it as the kick-to-kick -kick distance. I like pan, though. I might Pan's have to start kind of... using that now. It's a lot shorter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we can just shorten every dimension to just three letters, we're set. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is like kind of the most basic way to look at it. So when we're talking about wheelbase with the rail, the tail, the nose, the length. This is what you can go back to. Go ahead and screenshot this on your phone so you know what we're talking about. And if you're a bit more technical and you want to be like Bo, you might want to uh, <laughs> might want to refer to something a little different. Let's see, something like this which is going to cover kick tail length or height, kick <laughs> angles, radii, all of that stuff. I think this might actually be your diagram, Bo. I believe it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Google. I just found it. I'm like, that's probably really? Bo. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Uh, it's working out. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so like we're gonna be talking about a lot, a lot of this stuff, whether it's concave drop and, and all of this stuff. And these things vary immensely. While if you're a street skateboarder, you might just know kick tail, kick nose, and lengths. Uh, when we're making freestyle boards or riding freestyle boards, this, this is the stuff that like Sean, Bo, and I are all paying a lot of attention to. Would you agree, guys? Absolutely. Yep, definitely. For sure, for sure. So uh, starting off, we want to talk a little bit about concave. Uh, so like what, if you guys can kind of break it down, um, what's the difference between like, I guess, single kick and double kick boards? Sean, maybe you can take this one. All right, so single kicks traditionally have no concave, they're flat. And I've had pro models that were flat single kicks, and the concave gives it some strength. Bo, do you agree? Definitely. It's like a, a piece of paper. If you hold a piece of paper out, you curve it, it stays straight. If you flatten it, it flops. So concave equals strength. Stiffness. All right, good. Good. I was on to something there. Yeah, <laughs> um, but traditionally most most single kicks are flat, and uh, some freestyle double kicks are also flat, depending on who made them and the rider that it's for. Um, Mike has a what board? Uh, this is actually a, a sample for a waltz board that never came out, but it, it was a single kick, no concave. Might have a little bit of concave, but it's almost totally flat single kick freestyle board. So when you're talking about single kick right? It has a tail to it. It's got a, a, an upturned tail, but that nose is flat. So there is a, a bit of nose after the bolts, right? But there's no kick to it. It doesn't turn up. Yes, exactly. So, so you got your this, model there. This is my model here. Oh, nice reflection there. So I technically, it is a single kick, slightly upturned nose, if you can see that. Huh. And then it goes into a very, very steep tail, but it also has a very steep amount of concave to it. Cool. And this was the first single kick I ever skated from transitioning over from a street forward to freestyle. And I do not recommend that. And we can go into that in detail. <laughs> we, I feel like we, could, we could do like a whole like college class about Oh yeah. Concave. I mean, Bo, like <laughs> but between the stuff that we've worked on and Sean, the, the boards that we've tossed back and forth, I feel like there's a, so much you could go into. Um, I think first we can kind of show off some, some single kickers and some double kickers and talk about kind of how people skate maybe. And uh, maybe we can start with that. So how maybe skating a single kick, let's start with that affects how you ride and some examples. Let's see if I can pull up some, Freestylers who ride single kicks. Ma -ma -ma. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs> the, the first one I think of, I know a lot of people say footwork is really good, fast tricks, rail tricks for single kick, and also some pogo stuff. I've also skated double kicks. Pogos are fine no matter what. Um, single kick, the first one that comes to mind is uh, Eric Lowry. Is that yeah. correct, Mike? Is that his last name? Eric Lowry. In incredibly fast footwork. I mean, he's got those uh, those spacewalks that almost go 360 degrees all the way around. It's he's a crazy sweep. So good. I'm going to pull up his clip actually right now. I can do this. Eric Lowry. So Eric came out to some of the earlier... Uh, Philly events, right? So I think you skated with him out in, in Philadelphia back in the day, right? Yeah, um, probably 2010, uh, 12 and 14. He was also at the Burlington, North Carolina skate picnic that we yeah. had a year ago, two years ago. I don't know. Time has been flying by. Time's an illusion, man. It's all just, it's all just a big of our imaginations, dude. All right. So we got Eric here crushing it. Talk about fast footwork. So he's also riding a smaller yeah, board, crazy. which we'll get to size soon, right? Yeah, it, Eric is a really tall guy too. So when you look at him, I mean, the board looks like a toothpick. And he's riding the same size board as I do. 
Um, I'm five foot two, so it looks kind of proportional with me. So, uh, but no, Eric, uh, Eric is a tall guy for sure. Yeah. But so he skates. So what kind of though. stuff is, is going to be helpful riding a, a single kick? Like if you're talking about stuff, totally flat nose board, what kind of stuff are you trying to do with that? Or like what kind of advantage is it going to give you for what kind of tricks? For sure, a lot of pogo stuff. I mean, if you start off any type of truck transfer, if you start off on the tail and you land on the nose in a truck transfer, it's just a lot more solid. It's easier just to kind of shift your weight around on just a straight nose when you land on it. Okay. So, so you're going to be landing on stuff like like that, right? Rather absolutely. than on the kick tail, which, I mean, we saw Eric doing that too, but it's probably also a very mellow mellow kick tail right yeah and where it kind of uh the disadvantage is if you're trying to pop off the nose it's gonna be really hard you're not okay. gonna have as much purchase on there to kind of scoop it or even pop it off interesting yeah uh, i've definitely seen that i know like uh we we're gonna have a question later on about sort of how ollie flip tricks are affected and how we can kind of uh, approach ollie flip tricks differently with single kicks which we'll get to that in a bit um bo um so you you actually don't really skate single kicks much at all right yeah i i've only tried them a handful of times um like i think you i might have tried your single kick once um ben farquhar is another guy that skates a single i think he's does he skate single kick i know he skates really s small board yeah, I, he he's but been like, changing it up a lot lately. I think the last time I saw him, he had just gotten that big, excuse me, that big like eight inch single kick that you made him. Okay, so I that might have been the one that he made because he made one with me once. But oh. anyways, like uh, the single kick stuff. Yeah, I don't. My only experience is with more asymmetrical boards because I like having a nose. I've never really felt. I've never had any interest in skating a single kick. That's pretty much the only reason why I haven't done it. Um, <laughs> And I think it's because the, the style I typically see associated with single kick isn't necessarily the direction I want to head. And also the whole thing that got me into skateboard building to begin with was I wanted a truly symmetrical board, um, which is very, very rare. Um, a lot of boards have a steeper nose and a mellower tail and the nose is also a little bit longer and typically I think a little bit like fatter and wider. Um, right. I can go into that. I mean, I can go into that if you want me to. I know it's like, there's like a whole bunch of different avenues. And I'm trying not to like. We'll keep it surface you. level for now. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you actually have the boards? I know we saw Sean's uh, single kick set up right now or, or slight kick nose set up. Can you show us yeah. what you're riding these days? So this is what I'm currently riding. Um, this is one of the steepest boards I've made. Um, it's got 21 degree kicks. It's twin tip, uh, twin tip. So no, no distinct nose or tail, it's symmetrical. Um, and you can see it's pretty, this is, and it's got a pretty heavy amount of concave here. Um, I think oh, it's wow. about a half inch of concave drop across eight and three eighths width. Um, and this is like, it, it's, I think you describe this as a steep board. Like, I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fairly steep. And I did this in ex as an experiment. It's a little bit steeper than what I used to skate. Um, and I actually found that I liked it a lot. Um, and right now I'm trying to decide whether to go, I, I, my next board's gonna be another one of the, um, if anyone has followed like my Instagram or open source, another one of the rocker with wheel flare ones, I can talk about why I'm gonna switch to that. But I also, I do like this a lot, but there's a lot of pros and cons to this I can talk about. Um, so. Yeah, well, well, for now, I mean, I think it's, it's cool to see that you're actually riding something totally different from either Sean or I, right? Like, uh, yeah. I'll get into my, my shape in a minute, but we're talking about single kick versus double kick. There's not just even that, that specific, you know, A, B, like polarized idea of what a skateboard is or freestyle skateboard is. It's even more nuanced than that, right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, for you, it's like the steepness of your, of your double kick board, whether they're symmetrical or asymmetrical. Um, there's a lot to it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, well, cool. so, Bo, I have a question for you. You said you have a 21 degree kick on the nose yeah. and tail. How yeah. does that compare to like what you would go a regular street board that you buy at a skate shop just to street give someone some a good? Yeah. So normal street decks, I think steep is between like 
21, 22 degrees. Some pool boards might be even more like 23 or 24. Um, and then mellow is more, I think, 18, 19, maybe just shy of 18 um, for what I oh, see. Yeah. And I've, I've seen some of those numbers are real, has published some of those angles. Um, Powell Peralta, their mini logos, they have their, some of their shape angles published. So that's where I've kind of seen, seen some of those numbers. That's super cool. So do you, and you make all of your stuff public with open source, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all pretty much public. And the design tools I have, I try and guide. Um, I give guidance for when people are designing their boards on ranges they might want to shoot for. And it, it of course, varies depending on people's style, wh right. like what they're trying to do with their board and how they want to use their board, where a single kick or a double kick might make more sense for them. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to say real quick, I want to show off some riders who are riding double kick boards. Um, if you want to go over kind of what you think, um, what kind of like advantages you see in let's say a double kick and then also how steep your double kick is. Um, like what do you enjoy about all of that? Or like what, what does it help with when you're skating? Yeah, so um, having two kicks, whether they're symmetrical or, or let's we'll start with asymmetrical, which is more common, you have two kind of sides to experiment on. So some tricks are gonna be easier on those, some tricks are gonna be easier on the tail. With symmetrical, it helps because you can just fling your board around and not have to plan too much about um, you know, what you're going to uh, necessarily do, do next um, as much. Like you don't have to quickly pivot your board around. So it looks like this is a denim skating denim. A, a freestyle double kick. So um, if you see, he did some like ollie uh, flip tricks too. Um, so that kick nose also helps with flip tricks and ollies. I actually didn't realize how important this was until fairly recently, but that nose steepness really helps catch your foot and pop up. Um, nice. So, so you're actually, so you're relying on that nose. There's Denim's beautiful face. So you're relying on that nose uh, for when you're doing your ollie flip tricks, like Sean was saying. So like when you're doing a single kick or a, a kick flip, for instance, an ollie kick flip on a single kick board, not having that nose there. Let's get a board for an example. Ugh. Not having your nose there. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> Like not having a kick nose to catch when you're flicking off uh, makes it harder, yeah, it's to, harder to level the board out, right? Yeah, so not having that nose prevents you because that, that nose is kind of creates a little like pocket for you to grab on and like get some traction to help your mm -hmm. front foot. I always thought the ollie was more like hit hard with your back foot and just move your front foot up high, but that front foot also drags the nose of the board up. So if you okay. have a steeper nose, you're kind of giving it a little bit of a handle for your foot to pull the board up higher. And then with flip tricks, um, concave, whether it's nose tail concave or lateral concave provides leverage. Um, and the more leverage you have, the less effort it takes to um, make the board spin and flip. Super cool. So, so Sean, like when you're riding a single kick or for your instance, uh, for instance, your uh, slight kick nose board, what are you doing differently to, I guess like, adjust for that kind of a thing? Cause you, you still do a bunch of Ollie flip tricks, right? Yeah. So w with heel flips, it's even on a street board, double kick board, I don't even go near the nose when I actually flick it off. So actually going from a single kick to a double kick, there's no problem. And I recently posted something on Instagram with my double heel flip. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. they're, they're really consistent. <laughs> But yeah, so, we're, but we're that's all really happy for things. you. I'm not mad at all about how good the single double heel flips are on that. <laughs> but I think that's my type of skating and how I learned heel flips, as opposed to kick flips, which I probably really dialed it in maybe within like the last three to four years. Yeah, which uh, which was really hard with a single kick, just because you're almost uh, you're dragging so hard and so far with the toe and then you're trying to quickly just snap your ankle because you don't have a nose there. So, I mean, it's, it's probably the fact that I skate single kicks <laughs> that I could Makes, learn kick flips. So you, you've got like a totally different set of muscles for that. Now that you've, you've learned them that way. Right. Yeah. That's, but can you another, hear flip just as easily on a double and a single kick? Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah. 
Interesting. Whatever, man. I I don't get it. I I have to flip so hard. I, maybe it's it's like what you're saying, where you like you just have a different set of muscles now because of it. But when I started learning how to do like like 360 flips were like the only really trick that I had dialed in ollie flip wise. I don't know why, but when I started learning those on on a single kickboard after switching back from like a slight kick nose, I think small school deck, um, it was like one of those uh, snub nose like slight upturn um, single kicks. Uh, I struggled so hard because I couldn't figure out that I needed to flip down. Like that was, that was the trick for me was I had to flip my foot. I have a board right here. I don't know why I'm explaining it without my board. Instead of flicking outward, I was started flicking like down and that's what like unlocked it for me. But it took me like months of skating for that to, to click. Uh, so I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Well, it, it, a, another big trick, Ollie trick wise, that I do is uh, an inward heel flip. Uh, and I have to pop off the nose because I need my, my front foot to hit that tail that has the kick to it. Oh, so that's like another trick you can do too is like actually using your, like skating the board backwards essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the 80s trick, I feel like. And that's like what all the dudes in the 80s did when they learned Ollie's, right? Yes. <laughs> For sure. Well, I'm, here, here's a, a quick clip of Bo. Speaking of double things, is that a double heel flip from CrossFit? Uh, your... Triple. Tri... See it, Sean? Pull it together. That was that was yeah, kind of being a, a smaller board, smaller and mellower. So, oh, smaller and mellower? Yeah, that's a 7.5. Um, oh. And a little bit less concave and a little bit less steep than the uh, one I'm skating now different mold here i thought i was like i was helping out your point about steep concave and bigger boards and i i just misread the show notes so oh, no, my no, bad. That, <laughs> you know that is good because it's still a lot steeper than what like sean is like talking about but he's doing double heels on the flat board so <laughs> i'm, Everything I'm is gonna so act like i'm not trying to turn this into like you guys pitted against each other arguing about <laughs> single kick versus double kick but that's totally the point <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so so we talked a little bit about a uh, double kick versus single kick. There's so much we could go into, but um, I, I feel like that's probably better for another episode in the future. Um, let's talk a, li a little bit about size, si like board sizes. Uh, we, we've got like a huge variation, and we were talking about that, that size of that double kick you were skating, and then even just comparing what I'm riding to Sean, what you're riding right now, to Bo, what you're riding right now there's a huge spectrum of, of board shapes available for freestyle. Um, real quick, let's talk about um, Sean, your current ride right now. What's like, what's the overall length? You know, like how long your current setup is? Um, I think it's like 27 and a quarter, maybe 27 and a half. I mean, it is short. And so the overall length and the width, when I look for a board is not that important. It's actually the wheelbase. Just because I do a lot of pogo stuff, I need a small wheelbase because I don't want the truck digging into my knee. <laughs> and, that, and and that's how I go through boards. But if you look back when Mike and I were in high school skating, normal width was, what, seven quarter to maybe 7.3? Oh, yeah. I mean, they were, they were 7.3 wide. I mean – I think my first board was a seven inch skateboard, a seven inch freestyle board. And it was like a Kevin Harris reissue. No, um, but, but now you have other boards coming out, seven, three quarters, eight, eight point ones for freestyle shapes, which is great. And I mean, it brings in a lot of different people that may not have wanted to skate a too thick. Totally. Yeah. And then Bo, like you, I mean, you said yours is like 27 ish. So, so we'll talk about wheelbases in a moment, but just for like a, general size difference 27 it's like 27 and a half inches long my board's like 28 and a half 29 and then Bo, like you're riding a fairly like large board in comparison right yeah i think it's a i think the length is about 32.5 um interesting but yeah i pay more to, like sean I, I am focused more on the wheelbase the nose length and tail length but i think it's 32.5 yeah so there, there's, there's just so much variance and then wheelbase is sort of uh the major um, factor there. 
So, so yeah. for people who are like just seeing this or like just getting into freestyle and they're like, well, these boards are tiny. Well, yeah. some of the boards are really small. Some freestylers and some, some freestyle companies out there are making tiny, tiny, like, you know, toothpick boards that are like 25 inches. I don't know about 25 inches, but like super short. And some people are still making like, I mean, I guess the Andy Anderson could be considered a freestyle board in some ways. And that's what, like 32 or 33? That looks uh, like a huge yeah. board. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then again, the wheelbase also kind of makes a difference. Um, so back to Sean, um, what do you find to be helpful about riding a uh, smaller wheelbase? Uh, and what, what do you like about that? So the smaller wheelbase, of course, when I'm doing no handed pogos, it's right in between like my shin and my knee. Mm -hmm. So it's not destroying my leg as much. But also throwing truck transfers, you kind of have like a pendulum effect. So once you get over, I guess, the apex, the rest of the board just quickly whips around with momentum when you're doing truck transfers. Interesting. I'm going to pull up, a, I think I have a clip here of you skating, doing some truck transfers on your single kick or on your, uh, your slight kick nose decompose board. Where's the clip? Here we go. So Sean, we've got you showing off just what you're talking about with that. Uh, I'm professional. I know what I'm doing. Are you guys on YouTube right now watching this? Yeah. Smooth sailing, y'all. There we go. <laughs> we've got a clip of you, Sean, showing off uh, just what you mean, talking about that short wheelbase. Now, like truck trains like that are just, are just snappier because you're riding a smaller board. Mm -hmm. Like what exactly is helping you when you're doing stuff like this? That was insane. Yeah. So actually that wasn't even my pro model. That was actually uh, the dancer. That was the first day that oh. uh, I set it up. <laughs> oh, I messed <laughs> it up again. Day, I showed the wrong clip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sean. This is the one I think we're supposed to watch. Oh, wait. Ah. Yeah, here we go. Jeez. It's like a sidewinder with a flip. You want to you want to walk us through that real quick? <laughs> All right, so uh... <laughs> I'll scroll through it with you. All right, Probably so, so the uh, the thrown <laughs> sidewinder that that's a pretty easy one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look at that grab. Look at, okay, we're going full screen for this. Everybody at home, look at look at the his right hand just forms like a claw. He's like hugging the board against his leg. Like, no, you're not going anywhere. It, exactly. It's land at all costs. That's a contest land right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so that that's not really something I could do with a larger board because it would take way way too much force to throw it around. So with a smaller board, once it's kind of level underneath my feet, it quickly just snaps right up too with that weird pendulum effect. Interesting. And like you were saying, that shorter wheelbase, like it's kind of hitting a good spot on your leg, right? So you can Absolutely. see actually from that side angle. I mean, a longer wheelbase would be in your knee. Wouldn't it? Exactly. Exactly. And the next trick is the main reason why I need a smaller wheelbase. And it's that uh, vertical shove it or windmill, what, whatever it's called. Let's, let's roll that one back. Windmill. Yeah. No, thanks. Yes. Yeah, so, so that. So that's pretty much a Hail Mary pass right there. You're throwing it between <laughs> your legs and you can't even see it. So... I mean, very hard trick to learn. Uh, really don't recommend people learning that, <laughs> but uh, it, it looks awesome. Are we going to see the trick tip next week? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Something you should be able to pick up in about, you know, two or three tries. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> if you're watching at home, now's your time. All right, so so we can see, like, there's, there's a ton of advantages for more, like, truck transfer tricks. Um, do you do a lot of rolling tricks as well with your single kick and with that short of a wheelbase? I, I do. I just don't film it because, uh, 
tripod footage just doesn't look good with rolling tricks that much. And, and I, I, feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like you're every kid on Instagram. Like, dude, you, you have wheels. You need to roll. All right. Since, since you're just like able to do everything on your board, I'm just going to step in and explain my pers- like my experience with those short <laughs> wheel bases. Well, you, well you, you skated multiple single kicks, right, Mike? <laughs> you, you had them with small schools, uh, previous sponsors. So, yeah. And, yeah, I will. I, I I rock the the Lilith is probably the smallest one I rode more recently. It's like the like Lilith Ackerson had a uh, board on reverse freestyle. All the freestyle nerds out there are gonna know that. Anybody who's like new to freestyle is gonna be like, "What's reverse?" Um, reverse is awesome. They were uh, uh, one of my sponsors. They were like an amazing freestyle skateboard company run by Lynn Cooper. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but um, yeah, they had like a, a eleven and a half or twelve, maybe it was a twelve inch wheelbase on that board. Um, so talking about wheelbases, like you're riding a 11.75 wheelbase right now, right? Yeah. So 11 yeah. and a half inches. Um, and that's like the distance between the trucks, all you people who are just tuning in. <laughs> um, I That was a tiny wheelbase for me, that 12 inches. And that's actually the same as the Dancer that you're riding. Yeah. Like, Which is why I like it. Stoked for you. I could not do rolling tricks on that board to save my life. I just felt like my feet were so close together. And at any time I got over like two pushes and speed to do like a 540 shove it or anything, I was struggling to stay on the board. Um, even like my, my last uh, pro model from mode, I think it was like a 12 and a half or 13 inch wheelbase. And by the end of the time of skating it, I was like, man, this is like tiny. Um, but then again, it was it was just not suiting some of those faster tricks for stuff like footwork and, and the truck transfers you're talking about. It felt amazing because of all of what you just said. So, for a few people who are out there who are trying to decide what they want, um, if you want to do more stationary stuff and like you are doing more te- technical truck transfer stuff uh, tricks, um, those shorter wheelbases and shorter overall boards are going to be really helpful um, for rolling stuff. If you're like Sean and you are just good at everything because you're Sean Burke. It's going to be really helpful. It won't even matter at that point. But well, personally. I, so I have a question for Bo now because he does on-demand skateboards, custom skateboards for people. So would this be more of a personal style thing or would it also – would height uh, be a factor into this? Because I'm fairly short compared yeah. to Mike. Yeah. Oh, true. It's, it's both. So – when I'm working with beginners, I'm doing my work, my classes, and I have beginners building boards, we roughly go by height. Um, and the way I, I have people do it is um, stand on the ground, like you imagine your most stable stance. Um, like just, there's no board underneath you, but just imagine your, your ideal stance on a skateboard. Now measure the inner distance between your feet. So like put a ruler at the inside of your, your left foot and measure to the inside of your right foot and that's a good gauge of where your ideal wheelbase um, should be because you're most stable directly over the wheels Um, and that's the trade-off between wheelbase uh, with with size really is the the larger the board the more stable it is but the less control you have smaller the board the more a lot more control you have but it's a little bit less stable Um, so with with that being said and obviously your stance is generally related to your height um but that being said i see really big guys doing um tricks on small boards and i see small guys doing tricks on big boards um and it's i think it's best if you're starting out to use height and i think paul schmidt has like a scale um for for like suggested wheelbase um I think that's also geared more towards street and pool skating, though. So for freestyle, mm-hmm. it'll be a little bit less. Um, and honestly, just look at kind of what's out on the market and like what, what a lot of freestyle boards have and kind of shoot for the average. Um, if, if you're an average height person, if you're a smaller person, maybe go towards the lower end of that spectrum. And if you're a taller person, maybe go towards the higher end and then experiment and see what works, works best for you from there. That's cool. Okay. That's that's interesting because that's something that we've definitely had a problem with, or like a challenge we we've, we've had to approach with Waltz. Because um, like starting out, we really just made Daniel and I uh, boards for ourselves, 
we didn't really consider like what other people other people's needs were whether it was their their height or the, the approach they were taking to their skating and now as like our catalog kind of expanded we tried to make more types of boards trying to decide like how small to go or what sizes we should do of everything um I, I, we are kind of looking at what you're saying like uh, do we do we build it more for like people's approaches or are we trying to like i don't know specialize for like body size like younger skaters getting into it or smaller skaters getting into it or, or people who are a little bit larger or older getting into skateboarding i feel like there's so many different um approaches you can take nowadays yeah and i think it, it's also like what yeah what kind of skating do you want to do are you going to be more are you focusing more on technical um and like getting that extra flip or that extra spin um or doing those crazy truck transfers maybe you want to go a little smaller or are you trying to refine your style a bit more and get more comfortable and master some tricks? You maybe want to go a little bit bigger because uh, there's more room for error on those bigger sizes. That's why I went from skating like a, a smaller board to a, a larger board. Um, and there's, it's, it's a lot more stable. And it's also just fun to experiment with. I think ultimately the best thing to do is to experiment really uh, like yeah. find people that have different boards and try them out um, and, and put a little bit of definitely give everything a little bit of time because it's going to take time to, to figure it out. But there's boards like that there's tricks I can't do on my board that I have right now, but I like it for all these other reasons. But if I really want to do this one trick, I'd have to use a different size board. Yeah. It, um, have you come across that a lot though? Just changing up deck and shape sizes that you lose tricks, but you gain some others? In my personal experience, yeah. And I've, I've seen it with other people a little bit. It, it takes a lot, of, um, a lot of skating and a lot of awareness. So I don't notice it as much with other people unless I've talked about it with them. But like that triple, that CrossFit triple heel flip on that board that you played, that was played earlier, I can't do that on my current setup. Like there's no way my board's, I think just too big and that was a couple of years ago and I think my styles just evolved differently like the way I skate um, yeah. and I can only do an actual real tray flip on a long board like the, my best tray flip ever was on a, a, a loaded tesseract I, I can't do a regular tray flip on a <laughs> I gotta find a picture of a, of a loaded tesseract because there's gonna be someone out there who's I, like what is that I think I that? put that, that video in the uh, it's somewhere I think in that, that shared document but uh, it's yeah you think it's like yeah, it 40 be something towards the bottom 38. here here we go mike um, let's try to find it <laughs> but i think the is reason it on for Bo's that huge is the... board <laughs> which i remember the video okay go on sorry Bo. <laughs> i was just gonna say it like i think like the reason for that um and that inspired me to go off and try and make a board with rocker and wheel flares so i thought that was what was what it was i thought i got extra leverage from wheel flares and rocker um, that helped me get this 360 flip because I was I've always been determined to like be able to do a real 360 flip. Um, if if anyone sees me on Instagram, it's like you do them all the time. Those are actually 360 underflips. It's all in my back foot. Um, <laughs> but uh, the I think that was more due to just the overall length of the board. It, it had a shorter tail, it popped up higher, and somehow it it works. Um, cool. So. What, did it, do you think it had to do with just the kick angle then or like the, the apex of the, the board before it popped? Like, were you just getting the it board could, more vertical? It could be that, but like, I, I don't, it, it still didn't feel right. It was also a wider board. I think it's like nine inches wide. So I'm going to go for wider. Um, that's another thing that I mistook early on in skating. Like when I was in college, I was always buying smaller boards because I wanted to do flip tricks. I wanted to do technical street stuff. That was more my style when I was skating in college. I didn't really get into more freestyle skating until after college. Mm -hmm. um, and I always thought smaller was better. So I was skating usually like seven, seven, five, probably eight was big. Um, and then I was skating with a guy at a skate park and he commented on how small my board was. Um, <laughs> and Short nose and tails, really hard to do tail slides on, I learned. Um, and then also, and like no slides. And then I tried to do a flip trick on his board and it was easier than on my board. And so while the boards flip easier when they're like smaller and more compact, mm -hmm. um, they, 
you don't get as much leverage. So if you're having trouble just getting the flip to begin with, it might be helpful to start with a wider board or a and, larger board to get you more leverage. And, and just to be clear, we're talking about Ollie flip tricks and more kind of yes, flat ground sorry. street influence yeah. skating. No, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think like it's important to make that distinction too, though, because um, kind of the opposite of what you guys were talking about before about body size or body type and, and board size, I think also approach and, and how you decide to skate or how what your like goals are on your skateboard also become a factor um, when you're looking at your your like I don't know length or width or uh, wheelbase or nose and tail length right um, I know at least for me like I, I had a full I had a whole video where I was trying to do nothing but like super fast rolling stuff and it, I, I guess we can we can also talk about other other big board riders but um, the overall like when i was trying to roll faster i found that i was able to just like you're saying get a lot of those ollie flip tricks and, and feel more more comfortable having the the contact with that nose or that side of the board because it was a larger piece of wood under me um i guess it, i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up some some clips from connor burke actually i think he's a really great example of this sort of faster or like more technical street flat ground influence would you agree bo definitely yeah so if you're talking about like getting into freestyle and specifically like this type of freestyle it might not hurt to be riding something a bit more ooh, i guess you could say larger on the freestyle spectrum or skateboard spectrum altogether not really even necessarily freestyle i i want to say the last time i skated with him he was skating what eight one eight two maybe wide board so which is kind of the average for most street skaters now, right? I think so. I mean, I, I feel like eight eight one eight two five is what I'm seeing at like skate shops a lot. Um, I'm not going to lie and say I, I know what the kids are riding. I'm old. Um, I wonder if it de varies depending on like where we are too. Like I, I see a lot of kids riding like eight three eight eight five that are like kids yeah. and like they want that wide already, which is. But I don't know if that's just here in san diego or if yeah it's you guys have all those nice concrete parks down there you guys have all like the crazy like flowy vert parks tra transition parks down there don't you i have i wish i knew how to skate those it's it's amazing <laughs> but like i grew up on the east coast skating like a box like that was what i loved to i wanted like a box or like a kicker and i came out here i'm like i just want a ledge at these parks <laughs> yeah i'm like so i just want flat ground just give me like that one corner of the park that has yeah. nothing <laughs> <laughs> flat, flat ground with no cracks or drainage I'm set but yeah, you can see with Connor <laughs> skating he's like super fast and like he's also tall like tall, like a taller than average skater maybe too um so maybe that's also you know something to consider like he's he's taller so he might want a, a larger wheel bit yeah uh, he also he just he takes momentum into account a lot with his skating it seems um, like Oh, sorry, I'm cutting you off. But but it, after every land, he's always in position for another trick. I don't know if if most people see that or not, but he's always quick, fast footwork, and he's thinking about three tricks down the line once he landed one. Yeah, which, which I think is why he did so great in uh, the roundup a few years back. And also why we don't see a whole lot of footage from him. <laughs> He's just evolved beyond <laughs> anything we're doing. <laughs> or, or it's taking him so long to actually get what he wants properly on film. Oh, uh, that I like that excuse. I hope that's the case. Cause that hopefully means we're <laughs> going to see more of him. I hope that means we're going to see more of him eventually. I miss Connor a lot. Um, and then we can even go as far as saying like longboarding and like looking at the way that longboarding um, can, can become kind of freestyle in ways, right? I mean, or I guess how how freestyle tricks can make their way into longboard skating, right, Bo? That's, yeah, that's really, that's what I'm like super stoked on right now most. And I think like what's really interesting is the merging kind of of these two two styles, like bring longboard tricks into shortboarding and shortboard tricks into longboarding. Um, yeah, and I'm definitely seeing that a lot more as longboard dancing seems to be like going more and more popular. It's it's fun to like you know take 
pick influence from some of these. And with these longboard dancers, they have these huge boards, but, and they're essentially dancing platforms. So they're so much more forgiving in terms of being able to do spins like pirouettes on the board, um, walking just up and down the board and creating a flow out of, out of walking. I think it, it almost seems like the bigger your board is because it's more stable, it's, it's easier to be a little bit smoother. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe that's, that might just be my opinion. I don't know if you, what you guys, if you guys want to add to that at all, like if you think it's, Obviously, if you, you whatever you're not used to skating is going to be hard to be smooth on, but <laughs> just overall. What's your well, take well, on that, Sean? Because you, you skate a pretty small board in comparison. What do you think? Well, well, it's also the fact that those guys are skating a larger board with looser trucks. So mm -hmm. their style looks a lot better because they're not cranking down that kingpin <laughs> to the point where it can't even turn. <laughs> just picturing somebody tic tacking out of every pirouette on a longboard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like watching a guy jump down some stairs. He's just tic-tacking the land and hand dragging for some guy who's got fairly loose trucks, lands it and just kind of snakes away with it and makes it look nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a good point. I, I think like, go, I'm going to, I'm going to keep kind of harping on this point, but in my experience, um, it comes down to what my approach is or like what kind of goals I have on my skateboard, whether it's like specific tricks or stylistic goals, totally. Like if I want to skate more smoothly and I want to roll and feel like I can flow in between things, looser trucks, like Sean was saying, and that longer wheelbase and, and overall larger board helps me a ton. But as soon as I start trying to move into like truck transfers and more traditional freestyle stuff like finger flips and, um, more quick footwork and more traditional footwork, like walk the dogs, that longer wheelbase, that larger board um, might not, it might not become more difficult necessarily, but it definitely changes how I have to do it. And that can sometimes be hard to get used to for me. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but uh, I, that's, that, that, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 I, a couple of years ago, I had like a, a separate a street board and a freestyle board. Um, and then I just, I, I tended to always have my freestyle board with me. I didn't want to carry two around. Um, so I, I switched to just having, like trying to find what's best for me all around. Um, which again, that was for my own, like even lifestyle, like even just beyond skating, like my lifestyle goals. Like I just didn't want to take just the nature of how I skate and where normally bike or skate to a spot i'm not driving to a spot where i could just throw an extra board on my car so if you have a quiver of boards i think that would be that would be great yeah oh, good here uh oh y'all good am i still here yeah i think so yeah we got yeah, I you i think i'm still here <laughs> yeah. the the pains of of uh, a guy who who creates skateboards the, the skateboard makers uh worst nightmare having having too many boards and not knowing which one they're to all over the place <laughs> yeah it actually like made me just want one like all these boards everywhere it's just like i just i just want my own one board <laughs> yeah I'm trying to use it for everything Ooh. sorry yeah well, I, I feel like we could go on and on about like I mean, we, we haven't even <laughs> talked about profiles and like shapes down to like the silhouettes of boards. Um, and that, that gets <laughs> even more complicated, but I think size and concave are kind of a good, a good start to, to someone's journey for everybody who's kind of getting into this. Um, what do you guys think about uh, kind of the future of, of boards? Like what, what kind of stuff do you want to see? What kind of stuff uh, do you hope we kind of start creeping into at, in terms of like freestyle and, and just skateboards in general in the future? Um, what's on the horizon for, for you, Sean? What, what do you think? Let's get, oh, get away from flat boards. I think we need concave. <laughs> double kick, single kick, everything needs concave. Um, everything. Absolutely everything. And so Bo and I were messaging back and forth and also future, of course, everyone brings up carbon fiber. So I've worked with carbon fiber quite a bit in my day-to-day -day job it's not the best thing to be around i mean it sheds it feels like fiberglass so you constantly have shards on you and it can become dangerous but 
I was thinking about it. Are those people asking for carbon fiber in a freestyle board? Are they skating just flat boards and they want that strength of carbon fiber? Or do they want, I guess, the light benefits of cutting down and reducing weight? But in a board so small, I, I think your weight reduction is minimal. So what do you think about that? And do you think the rigidity of it on a flat board would concave be better on a flat board than carbon fiber? So a couple things there. So yeah, uh, carbon fiber, what I've seen from people I've spoken with is it tends to be um, people won't want carbon fiber, typically want it for the lightness aspect. Um, and I've skated some full carbon fiber decks. Um, I, um, and they are a lot lighter. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things to consider, though, um, especially it, and also acknowledging, like, is lightness really your ultimate goal? Oh, flexibility also. Oh. And that, yeah. I, I, hang on, let me one second. And I'm going to switch off here. Good. There. Here, here. You there, Bo? Uh-oh. You guys hear me? We got you. You're back. Yep. Got me? Yep. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. My Wi-Fi is a little not great right now. Um, All good. But with the carbon fiber, um, the other, the other part of it is uh, the rigid function fiber. Uh, carbon fiber doesn't make uh, the board necessarily more rigid. There's epoxy that holds uh, uh, the Bo? I think we lost you. You can All actually right. lay it before. I don't know why this is doing this. We lost you, Bo. Here, hey, Bo, uh, do us a favor and hop off and then hop Hang back on. in. If you exit Can the studio and then reopen the page, it should be better. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, Sean, you've had some experience with Garden Fiber. Beyond, like, it being kind of hard to work with, have you found that it, it kind of works for skating? It makes the board more rigid or lighter, like Bo was kind of saying? I mean, I, I understand where it's, <clears throat> where it's being put with longboarding. I mean, you have a really long wheelbase and you need that structural strength and you need it as almost like a rebar. But Bo was saying it's also the epoxy that you mix in with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of the two, but also what is the, the extra added cost to that too? If you're talking 10% extra versus 40 or 50% extra, when's the point where they're, the end user says, no, that's too much. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, and, and it sounds like like you were mentioning concave. Like there are other ways you can um, you can kind of mitigate yeah. issues like flex or, or lack of rigidity by just constructing the board differently with how it bends and how it's molded, right? It, exactly. I'm, I'm always trying to reduce, uh, you know, trying to fix a problem that isn't really a problem. Okay. I see. It, You're, so so it's more like uh, rethinking the, the issue and what you actually want out of it rather than just trying to add more tech to something. Exactly. What do you think of that, Bo? Welcome back, by the way. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll try and maybe I'm moving too fast or talking too fast for my, my Wi-Fi <laughs> here. I don't know if that's how this all works, but anyways. <laughs> the internet was um, like, this year is giving away all our secrets about carbon fiber. Yeah, Shut him down. I, miss, I miss what Sean was saying, but I'll try and make it quick. Um, I don't know if carbon fiber essentially solves the problem that you're looking to solve. I think it's it's marketed in a way that people think that that's going to be the thing that solves the problem. We need boards that are more impact resistant and wear resistant than anything else. Um, and as far as lightness is concerned, okay, it will make the boards a little bit lighter. Um, but do consider the other impacts that carbon fiber has, it is also kind of more of an environmental hazard and health hazard. Um, same thing with epoxy. And I try and make, I actually stopped offering uh, epoxy layups with 
for customs uh, for custom boards i don't do those anymore um just because i don't want to work with that stuff mm -hmm. and i think i i don't know if you're going to get that much weight savings to really really significantly at least for the level that most of us are at if you're like really trying to go for world records or things like that or you are skating in contests maybe you want to try it out but my my recommendation my only person personal opinion is it's not i don't think that is necessarily the future um although it has its benefits cool. yeah that's it's basically it's funny it's almost exactly what sean said right i mean you're talking about <laughs> how how much of uh, the problem really is gonna get solved by something like that um i personally so i'm all about carbon fiber um I mean, I, no, wait, I didn't mean to say that. I'm all for new ideas. Uh, carbon fiber, now that you guys say that, I'm less into it. Um, <laughs> but uh, one thing I, I miss, er, not miss, but I'm like a total dweeb and like love the, the early 90s freestyle stuff. And like, in terms of like freestyle alone, we had all these really, really cool ideas and like weird ideas coming out of like the late, or the early 90s, like late 80s. Let me just pull up this video. Um, so like stuff like this, where we had all of these up and coming pros like Daryl Grogan, you had like people skating huge freestyle boards. Um, that guys were skating like eight inch freestyle boards in this video. And it was incredible. Like Daryl Grogan's doing Ollie 360 backhanded finger flips. I'm like, uh, I don't even know what that is, but it was enormous. <laughs> um, and stuff like this. Uh, not necessarily only possible because he's riding this huge board, but um, I don't know. I just think in general, there were a lot of really cool ideas coming out of um, that era of freestyle, like early 90s. And then the legs got cut out from under the whole scene. So like one thing that I was really stoked on recently, and I'm just going to plug myself and my friends because whatever, this is shameless. And it's my, my video. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, I was stoked to see uh, Never Enough do this reissue of this Gunter Makalis Rasta board that was like eight and an eighth wide. It was huge. Um, and we, we reissued it as a, a guest model for me. Um, you can't buy it anymore, so this isn't even really a plug. But I don't know. I like wide boards. I like the idea of like just trying out wider, shorter boards. And um, I hope that... Did Somebody did that it. board have concave to it? It did. Well, so so the, the Gunter Machlis had a spoon nose, and it was like it was the cruise missile to concave. I'm gonna get super nerdy for a second. So <laughs> I'm about to send Bo a board, actually. Uh, sorry, Bo. Um, <laughs> that's exactly that's the same good. shape. Um, but yeah, Santa Cruz had this like cruise missile concave, and they like cut it wrong. It was actually a mistake that board. Um, it wasn't supposed to be as big as it was, but they put it on this huge mold and they were, I guess they were trying to like make use of how weird this concave was, but it also had like a spoon nose, which is another thing I want to see come back. This is the international sign for spoon nose. Um, <laughs> where the, the nose, the concave from the rails basically scoops around into the nose and it, it looks like a spoon or like a bowl corner. It, it really looks like a ship's hull, honestly. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I had a board on me that I could show off uh, that looked like it, but um do just weird ideas like that and like i think a lot of those ideas would only really be possible if you made the boards a little bit larger anyway but that's what i want to see you know um uh, similar to the yeah similar to the ray meyer uh jacob in the in the comments uh he's saying it's similar to the ray meyer i think the ray meyer was actually cut also from the uh the cruise missile concave from santa cruz but we'll save that for the the after hours discussion where we talk about concaves and it gets really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think the essence of kind of the direction it's all heading is is more like experimentation like this, more different shapes. I think as as manufacturing processes uh, become more economical, um, and we can we can experiment more with different shapes more easily and and mass customization not just necessarily mass manufacturing but mass customization or mass made to order um like kind of having menu options of, of board shapes um i think we'll 
allow people to really experiment with shapes more um, and the geometries more than before. Yeah. And speaking uh, of which, I guess we can, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I will say anyone that's interested in looking at a different shape or wants to play around with maybe getting a custom shape, go to Bo's site, open source. I mean, you get live updates on that deck as you modify some of the measurements there. And you're going down a rabbit hole there. I mean, you'll be there for a few hours. Thanks, so Sean. <laughs> check that out if you want to. I mean, I, I exactly. I mean, it just some small tweaks. You can see some major changes. And I mean, like Bo said, I mean, mass customization and faster manufacturing, more on-demand manufacturing. I think that goes throughout many industries and. Mm -hmm the U S manufacturing as a whole is trying to go that route too. So hopefully that, that helps all aspects of skateboarding, not just decks, but wheels, yeah. trucks, everything else. Yeah. I also just we'll love see. playing in this, like, sorry to cut in, but like, I don't know if this is ever going to load. Cause I just put in like a 13 inch board with like a seven inch wheelbase. But, uh, sorry, go ahead. Bo. <laughs> it's, it's all good. No, it might, there's some, I, I try and prevent it from making, this version, I try and prevent it from making anything that I can't make or isn't like a, an item that you can e easily make um, in, with my tools and stuff. So it might, it might give you some errors if, if there's some weird numbers in there. But I was just saying, uh, like, Sean, you're in other aspects of manufacturing. Like, uh, it sounds like, would you agree that we're also trying to move more towards... Um, decentralized manufacturing, um, it, it, it seems like. So not these big factories, but maybe smaller manufacturing outfits that are more localized. Um, I think we're seeing that with, with the pandemic too. That's becoming more important. But do you have any exactly. any doubt about that, John? Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just um, not having a whole bunch of work in process type of deal. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's something that Mike and Waltz may be dealing with. Um, <laughs> but. Be a water but, ski. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is this is so much fun. I, I, I like I like the live stream, not just I'm not trying to plug uh, <laughs> open source. This is not fun at all. Making a skateboard. No way. But <laughs> Sean, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah. But being more on demand, I mean, more centralized, I mean, open source is on the West Coast. There may be something similar in the Midwest and there may be something on the East Coast. And I mean, maybe what Bo is doing, maybe he sells that as almost like a franchise opportunity where you have multiple people that are using the same tools as Bo that can help people locally. And I think that's kind of where manufacturing is going. Interesting. If I can cut in, I, I know like for, for us at Waltz, at least like having, having the ability to like to rapidly prototype stuff with, with Bo, the service you provide has been incredible. And um, I mean, with how centralized manufacturing is in skateboarding, um, it's often really difficult to get new ideas sort of worked through in the, at the rate that you kind of need to with the way that like skateboarding it runs now the, the speed that we all work so um i know like from my experience and, and with that kind of unique position i'm in being able to work with you at open source has been a huge um advantage for, for me and for waltz um and i feel kind of spoiled to be able to like try you know weird concaves and like throw an idea at you and, <laughs> and you know Hopefully people aren't going to like come out of this and, and start like sending you schematics to make for them. Uh, like I do. I'm sorry if they do. <laughs> no, that's what, that's what I'm here to do. So yeah. But I just made you. a pair of Wellander board. You guys know. Nice. Nice. <laughs> looks terrible. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So, so now I, I think we want to probably start wrapping things up. It's at like an hour and four minutes we've been doing this. Oh, people are still on. Everybody who's still on this right now on this live stream, thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, I hope you're getting some some cool ideas out of this topic. But, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about kind of best boards, worst boards, overrated, underrated. I know like 
we were talking about kind of stuff we've skated and uh, we've all kind of had our experience riding boards we hated or loved or weren't really sure about. Um, let's start with, with Sean. What's like the worst board you've ever ridden? Just objectively terrible skateboard. <laughs> All right, so I, I've customized a lot of my own. So, of course, those are going to be at the top of the worst board ever. But, <laughs> but it's always one you try. Yeah, but one that I bought, you know, straight from whoever set it up. Worst one was uh, the Cameron Martin board. It was a double kick. It was from East Belt, who's now no longer with us. But... um the only thing I remembered was you you pretty much had the tail, and then as you got about midway, it just flared out towards the nose. And you can't really tell on that picture, but it was it was terrible. Uh, so like the, the rails weren't straight; they weren't parallel. No, not at all. I mean, it was like it was like an obtuse angle, <laughs> like halfway through, and it was just. And then also how almost how aggressive that curve was at the nose and you had like maybe like a two inch or maybe a one and a half inch blunted nose, which did absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's kind of cute. I like how it looks. No, it, it's terrible. Mike just trash it. That board had the best graphic. <laughs> I feel like, like when they, when they actually made it, um, like when Powell made that shape, it had the coolest graphic. It's such a bummer to hear that it wasn't, wasn't as great, great when you tried it. I mean, that's probably why they did it. They said, look, man, this shape is absolute trash. Let's just make a nice ball hanger. <laughs> Sick. Perfect, perfect approach. Uh, Bo, what, what do you think? What was your, your least favorite or hardest to skate or worst board you've ridden? Yeah, I, like my least favorite, I, I, I think the one, uh, I, there was a, um, it was kind of a joke. It was, it was kind of a a joke board it wasn't it wasn't for me it was a friend had this had this made um and i should say it's i don't think it's a bad board for everyone it was just my least favorite board because i don't want to you know say that anyone was wrong in their design um but the <laughs> the foster freestyle shape is not for me and for those of you that don't know that <laughs> this is a high i mean i, I pulled up the worst example of the foster <laughs> Wait, let, me, let me find so the actual this... foster freestyle <laughs> So what this board was, it was a it was a it was a flat board, totally flat board, no concave, with extended kicks. So that pan, I'm gonna start using my new vocabulary, the pan <laughs> was shorter than the wheelbase. And you actually mounted the trucks on the nose and tail. So you had these huge angles that came out. So the kicks, you actually were on the kicks normally the whole time. And for me, I I did not particularly enjoy skating it that much other than just to try fun things on it because it's, it's so different. Um, and I, there are benefits to it. Like if, if I was forced to skate that and had to spend more time on it, I could probably find some great benefits. And <laughs> I know it was way more stable in rail because you're essentially on a tripod. You have like three super <laughs> stable points. Um, I don't remember rail flips being very easy though. <laughs> Um, and then I, yeah, I, so I mean, the one that I how were pogos is, on that bow? I, I'm sure pogos I, were great. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't even think I tried to to pogo on that thing. Um, so the one that I thought that was like the worst was the one that you saw with the two sets of trucks, um, the caterpillar. Uh, it was referred to as, oh, yeah. and that was just a that was just a mess to try and skate. Um, we had a great session where. Uh, Ro R Robbie, Robbie was there. Stowe, um, Yo-Yo even tried to do a Yo-Yo plant on it. Um, so it was fun to see everyone skate on it, but it was it was very challenging to skate that particular board. Um, oh yeah. So, dude, that thing looks rough. I mean, it, it's so funny here. Like, I love that you're like trying to find the the things that worked for it. Like, you're like, no, if I if I skated it long enough, like it would totally have worked out. There would be good for something. I the times I've skated that thing, I. I was just at a loss <laughs> completely. Um, I also, I mean, I, I'd feel better about it if I'd seen any footage of Mike Foster skating it, but I've never actually seen Mike Foster skate that shape. 
<laughs> so I saw a video. I, I never skated my well. Really? I found if you YouTube, you can find a, a video, and he he flowed. He had a nice flow on it. Um, it was really interesting. Um, it was cool to see someone like skate skate it well, and yeah. Cool. I uh, I can't believe. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I, it's just, wow. Okay. Somebody actually skates it. <laughs> so, Bo, if someone came to you and was like, hey, I want to make this board, or just threw out that concept, <laughs> would, would you just be like, nah, this isn't for me? Would you just kick them out? <laughs> I mean, I made that board. That, that was that was one that I made. <laughs> so, I I will make almost any shape if it's physically possible. I did have someone request a donut shaped board with concave that went all the way around. So imagine a circular board. Imagine you just take a skateboard and you press it as like a circle and it has concave all the way around. <laughs> and it's oh, not okay. actually physically possible without a ton of force and really like stretching and that gets oh, into yeah. some physics about bending wood. And I mean, the best thing, if you want a weird shaped board, Take a piece of paper and see if you can make the, sh the shape with a piece of paper. And if you can't, it probably isn't going to work um, because a skateboard is just pieces of paper, pieces of wood stacked up and bent and pressed into shape. So that the bowl nose, I won't get into it too much, but the bowl nose is a really hard shape to press because to create a bowl, you actually have to like stretch the wood. It's not simply bending the wood, it's stress stretching and compressing in different spots. So, and if you, again, if you have trouble understanding what I mean by that, take a piece of paper and try and make a bowl out of a piece of paper. You're probably going to want to cut um, the paper and make like a V shape and that way it'll be easier to make. But anyway, so that's. I, I can already hear the pain in your voice from dealing with me in a couple months. <laughs> well, well, Mike, Mike, what was the worst shape that you ever skated? I, it's funny you asked that, Sean, because I have, I have one of them right here. This isn't really the worst one, but I couldn't find the, uh, the version that I hated the most. Um, so like you, Sean, <laughs> I will like throw out ideas and try ideas and skate anything. And like, this was actually a really solid one. Um, this is one that Bo made me uh, as a kind of prototype for Waltz. But um, we started playing around with these uh, wheel flares and these sort of, I guess not really even wheel flares because they're not quite as, as deep or as uh, aggressive as the ones you ride, Bo. But um, we have this like kind of uh, you can see on the camera. Where is the camera? Um, there's like variable concave from one end of the rail to the other, so it kind of goes like up and down and up again. Uh, and the idea was to kind of give you pockets for your foot to land in or sit stably in on the uh, on the board. I think Bob Bob's trick tip Bob Lofton's on here. This is great. Um, so you kind of have like spots where your foot wants to naturally sit when you're doing the block the dog. That was my thought. And I thought, you know, we'll make it even easier for your foot to naturally want to sit in the center of the board by um, having there be rocker. So, Bo, I think you gave us like a, a I, don't, I don't know how deep the rocker was, like a, a quarter inch or an eighth inch. Do you remember? I believe you had, the, the first one might have been a quarter inch or, quarter or, inch. or three sixteenths. So like, I like how like <laughs> most importantly you say, I think I you, you decided, Mike, because I was <laughs> such an idiot. I like put like a quarter inch No, I, I, I put a... <laughs> no, I, I'll take I... Full, I'll, full, full confidence in how bad of an idea it was. <laughs> so you say that, but I, that's why I think this is important to just say this is our opinion, because I have the rocker wheel flare board, board here that, that I made which is a more extreme version, a more like, it's kind of like more like the bust in yo face, I think, than anything else. Um, this has a quarter inch. For a skateboard. Yeah, <laughs> a quarter inch of, of rocker, which for those of you that don't know, the rocker is kind of like concave in this direction. This here is a quarter inch higher than this point in the middle of the deck. Um, so rocker's this way. And my ollies never felt so good. Like, just doing an ollie, they felt great on this board. And I'm attributing it to the rocker until I'm proven otherwise. Um, <laughs> uh, it it I, is super weird to flip the, like, rail flips. Like, there's a weird, the center of gravity is just slightly off. Um, or the moment of inertia, whatever the proper physics term is. But it felt weird because it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's something weird about it. So it's not for everyone, but it's super cool. Um, and I like looser trucks. 
So having those flares is nice um, to help prevent wheel bite. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I hear you. I appreciate your opinion. <laughs> For me, <laughs> For, I just couldn't do it, man. I, um, yeah, so, so Bob, you're talking about, Bob's talking about the Santa Cruz deck. So I'm actually, I, I was just talking about the uh, Santa Cruz Cruise Missile too. And I think my, so my, my first pro model, no, my second pro model on mode, uh, the notebook board, no, the fortune board from mode, getting old. Uh, had a um, had a rock or to it, and it was because it was from a similar mold as like the old Santa Cruz cruise missiles, and um, it was a slight con a slight rocker, and it happened closer to the front trucks. And I think because it was closer to the front trucks, it operated almost more like a slight kick nose. Um, I wasn't really as much well. I was a fan of that, but I think once we made it so aggressive, and I think in addition to all of the other add-ons, I was just putting a lot into that idea and into that prototype. It ended up feeling like my foot never had a comfortable position to sit in because for Ollie flip tricks, it wanted to be right where those um, wheel wells, those little like flares we had were located. Like those, that little spot right here, where is, which is where, right where my foot likes to sit for like Ollie 360 flips, but it kept feeling like it was getting pushed back to the center because of the rocker or getting pushed up forward into the pocket because of the steepness of that flare. So I think all together, it just didn't really kind of like we were saying before, solve the problem I had in mind um, and just created a lot of problems additionally that you just got to rethink it. But uh, that's prototyping, y'all. That's R&D. We love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think we should also probably talk about our some of our favorite boards. I don't know, like, if we're all spoiled and we're currently riding our favorite things in the world right now. But, uh, but Sean, like, what's... What's like your favorite ride or, or maybe a board that really stood out for you that, that was really fun for you? Um, I guess the, what I'm skating now, the current shape, the, yeah. which was the Reggie Barnes, which, and then the Tommy Harwood shape, now the Sean Burke shape. It could just be the North Carolina shape. Yeah. It's, it's that one. It's the single <laughs> kick. And I mean, I, I went from a flat single kick and then a double kick. And then after about, an eight year hiatus, I went back to that North Carolina shape and I think I'll stick with that until I'm proven wrong that there's something better out there. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying to send you boards to try, send you every uh, board there is. Oh my God. <laughs> that That's up there with one of the worst too. Uh, but, but, yeah. but what about you, Bo? I mean, have you found the good mix of concave, uh, wheelbase length with that you're learning new tricks you're keeping tricks but also not sacrificing you know strength or anything else in it yeah i haven't found that perfect board yet um i do really like the one i just showed mike with the the rocker um i don't know if the wheel flares i think I'd, I, I would just keep consistent concave i don't know if having that flatter middle really added any value to me um, and yeah, just the boards I've been skating are all kind of within the ideal range for me about four, I'm switching back and forth between 14, 14 and a half wheelbase floating around, around eight, three, eight, eight, five. I think my next one's going to be a little bit wider. Actually, I just decided this like last night, I might go up to like an eight, six or an eight, seven, um, and see how that impacts my skating. Um, so I still... I still float around. I think it's important just to keep playing around with, with different shapes and seeing what works. Yeah. I, I get too restless on a board. I'm, I'm like already sick of skating a single kick and I've, only, I've barely been skating a single kick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then I'll be sick of skating my next board as soon as I, I have a good session on it. Um, it's like the curse of like my freestyle skating at this point, I think. Um Cool. Well, let's let's uh, before it gets too late, check out some questions from the the folks online. You guys down to do a couple more questions? Yeah, uh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, so we have some questions from people on Instagram. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's like this app that like, posts photos and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out still. Um, so freestyle Shiba 
at Freestyle Shiba asks, how often does Sean need a new deck? <laughs> um, it depends on the, uh, the season, really. Um, yeah. During the summer in North Carolina, I mean, it's really humid. I skate a whole lot more. And uh, just that humidity affects the board a lot. And then also me just like pouring sweat on it too, kind of water logs it. But during the summer, probably skating two, three times a week. Um, so a deck will last me about three to five weeks. Oh, wow. And then during the winter, you're looking at six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Considering you're, but, you're puddling that thing like crazy, man. Yeah, but, but I'm also not skating as much in the winter, too. So, I mean, we don't get snow, but we do get a lot of ice. So, and you don't want to be doing a lot of truck transfers when you can't feel your fingertips. <laughs> For sure. For sure. All right. So, next question we have from Max10 Hugo. Uh, how do I adjust to Ollie tricks uh, on a single kick deck? And I think we covered some of this earlier, Sean. This was something that you in particular covered. Um, I personally flip downward more when I'm doing Ollie flip tricks. But um, do you have any tips for that or anything that you would say might help people for ollie flips? Um, get a board with concave. And if you really like single kicks, um, and if you can't find a single kick with concave, you should go talk to Bo. <laughs> well, and, I think you also <laughs> mentioned uh, skating the board backwards too might help. Pop popping the nose yep. and flipping the tail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And get an open source board. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Uh, Freestyle Comics asked, uh, why do so many single kicks still come with giant square tails? Retro, are they for butter flips? Uh, what am I missing, he says. Uh, so I, I don't notice as many of those anymore. I think we've really pushed outside of, of the standard square single kick tail. But what do you guys think? I mean, Sean, do you ride a, a pretty square tail for pogos? Um, no, I skate a square tail because that's what the shape was. <laughs> that's so square oh my god uh, so <laughs> per preferably i would like to round that off <laughs> and have that a little more blunted i mean it's all right the only thing is you have a whole lot of surface area while you're popping like an impossible as it scrapes and pops the impossible so that flips pretty hard and trying 540s is pretty hard with it too but um Preferably that being a little more blunter and rounder, <clears throat> but it's also based off of a nostalgic shape too. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, Bo? Do you get a lot of um, requests or a lot of orders for, uh, for really square, like old school tails on your boards? Uh-oh. We lost Bo again. Oh. Many uh, am I here? <laughs> let me I think um i think my device is overheating so let me get a fan on it <laughs> cool we're gonna we're gonna move forward and come back to <laughs> one it. minute you take yeah. your time uh so moving forward um logan david hills asked uh what is the process for coming up with waltz board shapes uh and how many molds and tests did it take to come up with the shapes available now um so that kind of depends. I mean, we haven't done a whole lot of uh, our own like mold making. We actually haven't had a chance since COVID-19 hit to, to dive into the, the mold making that we're going to do for this year. But um, I know every board we put out, we've had a number of, um, of samples made prior to putting the boards out. Um, for instance, like the, the champion, or first it was the whale tail. Um, the, the whale tail was something that we, I think we got like three or four different um, prototypes or samples, I guess, of, uh, cause we were playing around with a few different concaves that already existed from our manufacturer. And with that, it, it has a lot to do with, um, with just seeing what works. Uh, every kind of new thing you add to the board, whether it's um, a steeper concave or a different kind of layout of the concave, getting into more of that nuanced stuff that we talked about earlier, uh, uh, whether you have a, a spoon nose, like we were talking about that bowl corner nose uh, or just completely flat. Um, and then the big thing with the, the 
whale tail when we were putting it out was we were trying to find a concave that had decent like depth in the rail to rail concave um, without giving us this like really weird steep almost um, kind of like vert retro tail because all these old vert boards and these old molds from the 80s we had access to had like super steep tails that would really only be helpful if you were you know doing a stand-up grind on the the deep end of a pool um and it, for a freestyle you didn't want a super steep tail so that's the majority of it just kind of picking and choosing what works um more recently working with Bo, now that you're back we can talk about this we've done a lot of prototyping shapes and doing these sort of fast prototypes with these foam molds um and we've already gone through what like five or six different ideas yeah i think yeah i think so at least five or six yeah and i think we're kind of just getting started <laughs> um we're finally breaking through with some ideas but uh yeah uh, for, for the new ideas and the new i think the next generation of freestyle stuff it's going to take some some real experimentation and trial and error to get uh something that works for everybody well, so. well going off that question mike i mean our I know originally Waltz was doing a lot of double kicks and then they switched over to doing some single kicks, offering that in the mix too. I mean, who is actually dictating it? Is it you and Daniel that say, Hey, let's do a different type of shape or is it the, some other skaters that hit you up on social media or email you and say, Hey, I'm looking at this different type of shape. Yeah. It's a lot of everything. I mean, um, the, the first board for Waltz was meant to be for me and Daniel. Like Daniel wanted to skate something bigger that had uh, a double kick. I wanted to as well. It was kind of like together we were like, we want something that we can roll around on and feel like we're riding, not just controlling. Um, so that was much more of like a selfish, like we want this idea. Um, the single kick came from one. I, I get, I, I can never decide on what I like. So I also kind of wanted to skate a single kick for a while. Um, having access to uh, molds that we were happy with for single kicks um, was a big part of that. Um, so just, we had to wait for the right opportunity to work with the right people to make that board happen. Um, that is Wat Watson laminates, by the way, uh, is the wood shop that we work with for, for that, that shape, the, uh, the Huntington or the whale tail. They've been amazing and they have such a, a huge uh, history of, of making great boards. Um, but uh, going back to your question, it's kind of 50 50 it's partly like what we're interested in and what like we're inspired to do but then also we are always reading dms and seeing comments and now with the live events we do talking to people like like jacob scott who's i think in the uh, in the comments right now um or other freestylers at the sessions or around town and hearing what they're into um it sort of influences us on what we're going to offer for next season um or how we're going to kind of tweak our shapes but yeah, I think freestyle is really cool because be because we're all so connected and we're already so used to communicating online, I think, and, and we're so used to discussing what works and what doesn't work for us. I think it presents kind of an, a unique opportunity to like gather ideas and kind of weed out the bad ideas or the, the ideas on board that don't work pretty quickly versus if it was like 1986 and we were just making a mold and putting it out there for people to try. I don't know. Definitely. Yeah. That was a long rant. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's that's the question. So, Bo, you, you had some uh, some points you were going to make about uh, specifically those those square tails, right? Yeah, just real quick. I know my Wi-Fi is kind of cutting in and out, but uh, the square tail was another one of, one of my least favorite shapes to make. Very early on when I started making boards, I thought a square tail would be great. Um, just more room for nose slides, tail slides, and truck stands. You'd have a, a nice flat surface for that. Um, but it was like impossible to do any rail flips um, with like a really square tail. Um, and uh, I do see with, with people, with customers, like I think Sean asked, do I see a lot with my customers? I'll see some more blunted, nothing too extreme, not a lot of super square and not a lot of super pointy. Everything's kind of within a certain range. Um, and I think I kind of skate some of my boards have more of a square, a square shape, but this is like as square as I'll get. 
and this is this is worn down already by the way so it's, it didn't start off like that but uh that's kind of a square as i'll see from most customers um yeah. benefit is just like more surface area for better contact with the board makes sense makes sense cool yeah, I mean, it's incredible to see how many different shapes we have now compared to like, I don't know, when I got into, when I got into freestyle, when Sean got freestyle, I feel like we had three boards available at East Built, and that was it. <laughs> like a couple decomposed shapes. No, and no, we had Outlook. Unique. Outlook, right, of course. And now there's what, how many different unique mold shapes and, and graphics on every deck. It's pretty wild. But anyway, let's hop into real quick. Uh, I think we, we just want to end off with some Instagram inspiration for everybody out there. Uh, so let's check out what Instagram has given us lately. We've got a few pretty crazy uh, tricks coming out for people in the last month. Figured we would give some screen time and show off some homies that we're excited about. So first off, we got Andre, who's been crushing it over in Romania. He's this like... A super young kid who's just been now clip after clip on Instagram. I don't think he's anywhere near Marius or any of the other uh, Romanian freestylers, but check out Andre. Putting it up in rails, getting the Marius single kick, I think. Is that a single kick? Yeah. Butterflips are not. Not an easy one. Oh. Is it a windmill, Sean? Is that, your, yeah. uh, is that what you were doing earlier? Did you help yes. him with those? Well, he kind of, he DM'd me. He goes, well, well, how did you do this? And I, I think I was at work. I mean, it's a huge time difference. And I think he showed me a few clips and he was actually like trying to throw it in front of him. And I quickly just like replied, like, no, you got to throw it like behind towards you. And I didn't want to be like a jerk, but I was going to get back to it. But then he... You know, a few hours later, when I'm driving home, he was like, well, what's the name of that trick? So I get home, and I, I was like, it's a vertical shove it or windmill. And then he posted. it. He's like, oh, I landed it. And, yeah. and that's not the first one that he's landed either. Dude. Yeah. So, he had a better grab than you, too. Look at, look at his hand. He's, like, very yeah. cleanly grabbing with that hand, unlike your weird hug that you did. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it... It, that is a Hail Mary pass right there. I mean, it is, it, it's a blind throw. So yeah. if he's willing to do that, that's awesome. He's going to be, uh, he's going to be coming at me with a bunch more truck transfers. So I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Bob, so Bob's in the comments. Uh, he just said um, that we all said small school. when We got into it. That's the reason I, I, we are. I'm, I am at least how I am is because I got totally spoiled by Jeremy Elder uh, making all those freestyle boards custom for people before we had Bo, before we had everybody else it was it was jeremy making some of the coolest stuff uh, for freestyle boards anyway just wanted to plug jeremy really quick but uh all right moving on we've got romanian powerhouse andre next up still in romania here oh. switching between the screens Oh my gosh. Romania's just coming in hot this month. They're like just always learning so many new tricks. All the little kids in the uh, Romanian scene around Marius Constantine. We got Danny. Let's see, rail handstand to cross foot. <laughs> just, you know, casual cross foot landing out of the rail handstand flip. That's a trick you really can't do on a larger wheelbase. <laughs> no? The, the, the land, at least. He, like, crosses his legs before he's even, like, up off the ground with his hands. I yeah. need to learn handstands, man. These kids are too good now. It's unreal. All right. Danny Boy crushing it. Next up. Let's see. He's playing. Yup. Nick Ballou. This was one that I picked. Nick Ballou with a finger flip to truck. 
in a late like backhanded slap flip out of 50-50. No slow-mo, making it hard on us. We gotta watch it a few times. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nick, Nick's incredible. It, it, so is he skating a double or single there? That's He's a, double, a double, right? Kick. Yeah, that's okay. that. That's the moonshine mold, the uh, double kick, Lilith mold with his shape. Nick's, yeah. Nick's, if anybody out there is looking for the Waltz double kick, the one that we were making from like a year ago, the monument, Nick is probably the closest shape, the Nick Blue pro model for moonshine, closest shape silhouette wise and concave wise to the, the monument. Nick's great. And might as well. So, like, we got a couple young guys. The one that I was really stoked on in the last few months was um, actually our buddy Pierre Andre. Oh, I don't know why I was showing Bob's video. Sorry, Bob, or Bob's comment on the live stream. Um, yeah, Pierre Andre, uh, owner of Etni Soul Technology, all that. Coming back, 2020, mask and everything. Pretty magical to see, even with the pose at the end. I don't know. You guys think this is like the, the year for the comeback for all the uh, the old dudes? Are we going to see like all the OG freestylers getting back into the scene? Well, Madrid tried to do it, and so did Tracker, right? They didn't do so well. well I mean, like people getting on their boards, though. Like maybe, maybe oh, we'll okay. see Jerry Madrid back on a freestyle board in 2020. That could be cool. I don't know. Or uh, Gesmer. Gesmer. Comment below who you want to see getting back on a freestyle board. Dan Gesmer. I would love to see Dan Gesmer at a, a Long Beach. Or like, is he in San Diego? Like a San Diego session? That would be incredible. On those, he's in those San Diego? Solo. I don't know. Maybe he's in New York. He's, I think he's a world traveler. Someone can correct me. <laughs> but comment below who you want to see back on a board. No idea. Who's your favorite old school freestyle pro you want to see back on it? Shredding with uh, with Danny Boy from Romania. <laughs> Let us know. Derek Elliott for sure. Derek. Oh man, I missed you. Yeah. All right. Any last words from you guys, Sean? Any last words before we we cut this one? It's been good to see you guys. No, I'm just glad that there's uh even during the whole pandemic, there's been a lot more freestylers out there, people getting into it, and. Uh, just understanding how easy it is to get into it because you don't need any ramps or anything else. There you go. I agree. Bo, any last words? Any calls to action? I think you're so thanks. thanks for thanks for having us. Thanks for sorry. Th yeah. Thanks for dealing with my Wi-Fi and thanks for, <laughs> for creating this. This is fun. We have no problem. So few more of these. Is like so so. There's so much more to get into, but. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we had for everybody that's watching. We put together like a whole like document of like ideas to to touch on, and I was like, yeah, it's gonna be like an hour and a half. We got through like a quarter of it uh, with video, with photo. It was a uh, it was a full multimedia presentation. So sorry, y'all, but I uh, hope you got something out of this. If you have more questions or have uh, any topics you want us to cover, whether it's me and these two or maybe some other people to bring on in the future, let us know. Give us some ideas and. Um, yeah, freestyle is awesome. There's a huge community. If you don't notice it, you can't tell from us and from the, all the people in the comments right now. We've got this really uh, unique and kind of global community of, uh, of skaters that all do this weird thing on their skateboards. So don't be he don't hesitate <laughs> to get involved and don't feel like you can't jump in and do this with us. Uh, yeah, keep dancing. But till next time, see y'all later. Be good to each other and uh, thanks again. Bo and Sean for being on this. See All right, soon. thank you. Have a good one. I'll probably text you guys in like thank 20 you. minutes. <laughs> Later. So, sounds good. <laughs>